depended on some method of coding the signal. Now, digital techniques have made a new method possible. The DMAC packet system offers an improved picture quality, a very flexible means of sound transmission, stereo sound, multi-language commentaries, several sound channels, simultaneous transmission of teletext and subtitles. This picture is coded as a DMAC packet signal. If we bypass the decoder, we are able to see the encoded signal displayed directly on the monitor. It is immediately apparent that there is no line synchronization of the type we know. Sinks are present, but they form part of a digital signal. The area which resembles random noise is that digital signal which carries the synchronizing information, the sound and other data. This very compressed version of the picture is the chrominance information. To the right of this is the luminance which is less compressed. Thus the different parts of the signal are transmitted in sequence. The DMAC packet signal is time division multiplexed. The sound and data as a digital signal occupy the horizontal blanking period. The chrominance and luminance as analog signals occupy the remaining 52 microseconds of the line. MAC coding of the picture is therefore the process of compression of the video components and time multiplexing them together with bursts of data. The picture, scanned line by line, is matrixed in the normal manner to give a luminance signal Y with a bandwidth of up to 5.75 MHz. Also, red and blue color different signals with bandwidths of up to 2.75 MHz. The luminance signal is sampled at 13.5 MHz, thus giving 697 samples over the line period of 52 microseconds. Meanwhile, the R-Y and B-Y signals are sampled at a frequency of 6.75 MHz, but alternately line by line, giving 349 samples during each line. The samples are digitized as 8-bit words and stored in random access memories. Whilst the next line is being converted, the data is removed from the memories at a rate of 20.25 MHz. First, the chrominance is recovered. The 349 samples now occupy a period of 17.5 microseconds with a time compression factor of 3 to 1. The 697 samples of luminance are next recovered over a period of 34.5 microseconds with a time compression factor of 3 to 2. The time taken to recover all the samples from memory is 52 microseconds. Let's use this diagram to take another look at the coding process. You can see that the luminance signal is given an additional delay of one line period by the use of two separate memories. The two color difference signals are transmitted on alternate lines, one after the other, in a manner similar to CCAM. But to avoid some of the problems associated with that system, each color signal is found on the same line on every frame. Let's review the main points shown on this block diagram. After being matrixed, the three component signals are low-pass filtered, converted into digital form, then time compressed, and multiplexed under the control of a clock signal. If necessary, the scrambling of the picture can be carried out at this point.
This is done by changing the sequence of addresses used to read data from the luminance and chrominance memories. The codes which enable the scrambled picture to be recovered will be transmitted as data carried by the digital part of the transmission. At the output of the MAC coder, the digitized samples are converted back to analog form before being multiplexed with the digital sound and data. Let's take another look at a line of the DMAC packet signal. Before the block of luminance and chrominance, we find a clamp period lasting 0.75 microseconds, with a voltage corresponding to mid-gray. Preceding that, there is the digital part which carries the sound, other data, and the digital horizontal synchronization signal. The data carried by the digital part of the transmission is transmitted using a three-level coding system known as duo binary. You will be familiar with binary coding where the signal is represented by two levels corresponding to ones and zeros. The dual binary coder converts this two-level signal into one of three levels. How is this done? If the bit is a zero, then the coder reverses the polarity of the output for the following ones. of course a more mathematical explanation but this simple illustration serves to show the principle of the duo binary coding one of the main advantages of using duo binary coding is that it almost halves the bandwidth needed to carry the digital signal its bandwidth, the digital signal is oversampled before being passed through a smoothing filter. of digital information which occurs on every line of the picture carries line synchronization which uses the first six bits on each line along with the digital sound and data. Lines 624 and 625 are special and carry video reference signals together with service information and the frame synchronizing signal both in digital form. The digital sound and data are found in the remaining 623 lines. With D2 MAC packet, the capacity is 99 bits per line, more than 1.5 million bits per second. This data transmission capacity may be used for the simultaneous transmission of a stereophonic sound channel and four medium quality mono channels. Or four high quality mono channels. Or eight medium quality mono channels. or any combination of these. 
not to mention subtitles, teletext and other data in the capacity not used for sound transmission. For DMAC, the bitrate is twice as high as for D2MAC. And there are two 99-bit blocks of data per line, giving a capacity in excess of 3 million bits per second. The capacity is thus doubled, with a maximum of four high-quality stereo channels, or 16 medium-quality mono channels. An important consideration is the bandwidth required to transmit these two systems. This is 8.5 MHz for DMAC with its greater data capacity. D2MAC can be transmitted through a channel of as little as 5 MHz if the loss of picture resolution is acceptable. In either system, the sound signals and data are transmitted in the form of packets of 751 bits. Each packet contains part of the data for just one channel. These packets are inserted into the digital part of each frame. There are 82 packets per frame for D2MAC. With DMAC, the digital area is doubled and takes the form of two separate subframes. This is done in order to simplify the translation from D to D2MAC. The complete frame therefore consists of sound, data and vision multiplexed together. transmitted with a television program varies. A symphony concert requires better quality than that needed for a football match commentary. On the other hand, the processes of signal transmission and the effects of atmospheric conditions can degrade the signal to the point where it is difficult to receive. Therefore, it is necessary to take steps to protect the signal against errors which occur in transmission. Considerations of quality have resulted in the adoption of two standards of sound encoding. quality sound HQ. This uses a sampling rate of 32 kilohertz and thus has a frequency range of 40 hertz to 15 kilohertz. quality sound MQ. This uses a sampling rate of 16 kilohertz and thus has a frequency range of 40 hertz to 7 kilohertz. Both of these two levels of sound quality may be digitally coded in two different ways. In either case, the signal is first sampled. It may then be coded in a linear manner as a 14-bit digital word. This is referred to as L-coding. The 14-bit word can convey 16,384 different levels. It is also possible to reduce the data capacity required for a sound signal by the use of the method of near instantaneous compression. This is referred to as I-coding. The signal is broken down into one millisecond periods. The peak level during each period is converted into a three-bit scale factor. This scale factor is applied to all the samples in that block of samples. 
Thus, it is possible to transmit just the 10 significant bits of each sample. Finally, there is the option of using two levels of error protection. For level 1 protection, a single parity bit is added to each sample. This allows the detection of single bit errors. For level 2 protection, a specially calculated 5 bit suffix is added to each sample. This allows the correction of single bit errors and the detection of multiple bit errors. The number of sound channels that can be carried by the DMAX signal therefore depends on the sound quality, the choice of coding system, and the level of signal protection used. type of coding and the level of protection, there are four possible combinations of sample format and number of protection bits. For each combination, the lengths of the binary codes used for each sample and its protection differ. The data for a number of samples are grouped into coding blocks. For the first three combinations, a coding block corresponds to two groups of 32 samples. That is one millisecond of stereophonic sound. For L2, the coding block consists of two groups of 18 samples. The length of a coding block is therefore the number of bits used to transmit a sample multiplied by the number of samples in the block. The coding blocks, therefore, differ in length, being either 90 or 120 bytes long. If scrambling is necessary, it is done by combining the data in a coding block with a pseudo-random digital sequence. The coding blocks are then put into packets. A packet consists of 751 bits, of which 720 may be used to carry digital sound. A coding block of 90 bytes thus fills the usable part of a packet. In the case of coding blocks of 120 bytes, three blocks are distributed over four packets. Each packet is given an address and a continuity code, which allows the decoder to separate the packets. An 11-bit protection code is added to the packet address to allow correction of multiple bit errors. The order of the 751 bits of each packet is then altered by the process of interleaving. This is done to reduce the effect of transmission errors on the sound signal. Then the interleaved data stream is randomized by being mixed with a predictable pseudo-random digital sequence. This is done in order to spread the energy of the signal evenly over the spectrum of the transmission channel. The bursts of data are then sent to the duo binary coder. We can now look at the structure of the sound and data coder. The sound signals are sampled and digitized then coded and protection bits added and along with data from other sources put into packets for transmission. A supervisory unit ensures that the packets from different sources are transmitted in a predetermined order. These packets are then sent to the unit which carries out the time multiplexing of picture and data. The time division multiplexer 
which inserts the different signals into the time frame of the picture. Finally, in order to allow the receiver to produce a stable and accurate picture, it is necessary to add some synchronizing and reference signals. Line 624, therefore, contains a clamp reference and analog reference levels of mid-gray, white, and black. Line 625 carries timing and other information. A data clock and line synchronization, frame synchronization, the time, and also digital signals which continuously identify the transmission channel and give the format of the sound signals, information about scrambled transmissions, and the operating configuration that must be used by the decoder. In effect, the allocation of the DMAC packet frame between picture and data is reconfigurable in a very flexible manner. It is possible to transmit sound and data only, or pictures in differing formats, even high-definition pictures, or any other combination of these various elements. Thus, the DMAC packet system is capable of providing an improved picture, higher quality sound, new audiovisual services, and a flexibility to meet the broadcasting needs of the future. Ja, ja, ja.